Whether I'm watching a video on YouTube or an epic, thrilling summer blockbuster movie on the comfort of my couch, who am I kidding? It's probably a drama. One of the things that always immediately stands out to me is the visual style and color. As a lifelong fine art student, color was always important to me. But now, seeing it through the lens of a photographer, an amateur filmmaker, and an editor, it's more important than ever. In the context of a film, proper color grading has the power to make you feel something. Can you feel that, buddy? Huh? 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 Try this. Think of any movie or TV show you've enjoyed in recent history and try to recall what it is that makes you remember it so fondly. The usual response would be to reminisce on the characters. This is a tasty burger. The settings. Come on! And most importantly, the story. After all, it's the stories that movies tell us that captivate us. I'm gonna make them an offer he can't refuse. But what often gets overlooked is the marriage between those elements and color. Have you ever thought about what that movie would be like if it didn't visually look the way it did? The Matrix wouldn't convey that epic sci-fi world if it didn't have those green undertones inspired by those old green PC screens and that iconic green code. Ozark wouldn't have that dark and foreboding mood if it wasn't drenched in that chilling blue. Edward Scissorhands wouldn't properly contrast Edward's castle to the world he was introduced to without placing his cold, moody home against the vibrant pastels of the neighborhood. Speaking of Edwards, Twilight wouldn't be... Well, you get the idea. Does he look like a bitch? The point I'm trying to make, and I'm sure you realize it by now, is that color has a massive influence on our experience as an audience. Color can evoke emotion, and that's a really powerful thing. As an artist, the ability to control that experience by creating a harmony between sight, sound, and story is a deeply satisfying one for me, and it's the coloring process that I personally enjoy the most. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I color grade Fuji F-Log footage. So I had another video planned and in the works. I had the script, I had the storyboard, it was all basically done. But over the past couple of weeks, I've been getting a lot of questions and comments and requests on my color grading process. So I decided to pivot last minute and do this video instead, actually. Sometimes it's about giving my community not what they want, but what they need. So before we get into it, a couple of disclaimers though. Number one, I am not a professional colorist. I'm sure people who actually color grade for a living would be absolutely mortified to see my workflow and how I do this. So please take any of the tips that I'm gonna give today with a grain of salt. These are simply the things that work for me and I edit to what looks pleasing to my eyes. And while there's a decent amount of thought that goes into my process, I don't go nearly as in depth as say someone coloring a Hollywood production. Number two, I do all of my post-processing work in Final Cut Pro. I am fully aware that DaVinci Resolve is the software of choice for this stuff here and has a far more robust set of tools, but I've been a Final Cut Pro editor for over 10 years and it's what I know, it's what I'm familiar with, so it's what I'm sticking with for now. It's just never let me down. <laughs> Lastly, I'm sorry, but I use LUTs. That's right, you heard it, I use LUTs. But who doesn't at this point? These aren't my LUTs. This video is not here to sell you my LUT pack and take your money, but the LUT itself I did find online for free. I have linked where you can find them in the description below so that you can give them a shot as well. Cool, so with all of that out of the way, let's color grade some stuff. Okay, so now that we're in Final Cut Pro, uh, I have three clips that I've chosen to color grade. These are from a recent projects. You might recognize this bench one. Uh, so I wanted to get an outdoor shot, a dark shot, and then an indoor shot. Just some uh, for a little bit of variety. Before I go into the color grading, um, it's important to note that I shot all of this footage on a Fuji camera in F-Log. Even though I'm going to be editing Fuji video, the stuff that I'm going to be talking about can apply to footage from any camera. If you can shoot in a log profile, shoot in a log profile. Fuji has F-Log, Sony has S-Log, Canon has you guessed it, C-Log. Um, typically when I am filming, I'm usually filming one or two stops overexposed 
So with that out of the way, I'm gonna grade this first clip here. A lot of colorists or a lot of people who color grade video suggest to adjust your white balance and your exposure first. I actually don't do that. The first thing I do is use a conversion LUT. Most camera manufacturers will offer a conversion LUT because you're shooting an F-Log and you're working in a Rec. 709 color space, you want to be able to convert it from log to Rec. 709. Uh, what I do is rather than applying all of those changes to the video clips, I apply it to adjustment layers. Now, I downloaded my adjustment layers online a couple of years ago. I believe I got them from Daniel Schiffer's website. They're free. So I'm going to grab uh, just one of these. I'll just grab the look grade one and drag it over all through. And what's nice about making your changes to the adjustment layer is that anything that you apply to this layer, whether it be effects or color or whatever it may be, it'll apply those changes to all the clips below it. You know, in theory, apply a bunch of effects to this uh, adjustment layer here. And if I wanted to stretch it out over these three clips, all these clips would share those changes rather than me having to color grade each one or copy it and paste it on each one. What I am going to do though is just take this adjustment layer and cut the three of them, because I, I don't think they're all gonna share the same LUT, so. But like I said, I don't do white balance or exposure first, I actually do the conversion LUT, so what I'm gonna do is over under color, you'll see where it says custom LUT. I'm gonna double click that. And it is a, it is placed custom LUT over here in the inspector panel, and the, what I'm gonna do is go to my conversion LUT. I shot all of this on an X-T4, boom. And already, that's a big difference, you can see where we started and where we are now. Step two is gonna be adjusting my exposure and white balance. And so I will go into my colors. I'll add a color wheel. I always like to go back to inspector and make sure that I have it above the custom LUT and then go back into it. And from here, I'm gonna start adjusting. Now I use vector scopes and luma waves. Now vector scopes is gonna let me know if I am either have too much saturation or if my skin tones are correct, this line here is where you where you want your skin tones to lie. And then my Luma Waves is gonna just let me know it's a, as a guide for my highlights and my shadows and my midtones. 100 being your highlights and zero being your shadows. You don't want them to, to hit 100 or exceed it. And the same applies to, to shadows. So I will start with shadows. I like to bring them down. Now I don't like to crush. Some people like to get down to zero and have straight black. I don't like it. I like to have it slightly slightly above. My highlights are actually pretty good where they are. Um, Mid-tones, I usually try to keep around the 75 range. It's generally where, where your skin tone lies. And so I'm gonna try and make sure that that is exposed for that. And now every time you adjust one, it's gonna affect the others. So you, it's a kind of a balancing game. I'm actually pretty happy with that exposure right there. I am gonna go down. It was a warm day this day, so I am going to actually warm it up a touch, just like that. So now back in the inspector, the next step is to apply another custom LUT, and this is where you're gonna get creative. I did link in the description below the LUTs that I use. A couple of years ago, I found this Hollywood Films LUT pack, and it has all of these movies that are in it. There's a ton to choose from, and they're all based off of motion picture uh, looks. Some of them are awful, straight awful, stay away from them. Uh, but others are pretty good. Now they are pretty heavy handed, so you may have to dial it back a sum and make some tweaks and things like that. I and mean, of course, not every LUT's gonna work for every clip, but as you start to use these, um, I've been using them a long time, I kinda know what works for what scenario. So I have my go-tos amongst this massive list and there's like 70 here. So for this clip, anything that I have like greenery or grass or trees, uh, anything green, I honestly, oddly enough, go for green book. And right off the bat, I already know that's it's way too saturated. You can use the mix slider here to scale that back. It's basically like a strength. How strong do you want that LUT? Some people would say they usually cap off around 50 or 40, but I do remember one YouTuber saying a long time ago, like, if you go that far back, then you're then you're losing the benefits of the LUT. You're losing the colors and the creative decisions that the LUT is 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 giving your footage and so i typically am somewhere between 70 and 80 percent it's pretty high but i also like color and i like punchy color i just don't want it super super punchy Yay. so i'm gonna steal this back to like 0.8 and we'll go from there because i have slapped on another LUT. It's made some changes to my Luma waves and my saturation. So I'm gonna go back to my color wheels and I'm going to lower the highlights just a little bit. And my mid-tones right there is pretty good. My skin is a little too orange. So I'm just gonna go into hue, saturation, curves. Once again, let's make sure that I have that over the LUT. And I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and select my skin. And it puts me right here as far as the hue. And I'm just gonna pull that down. 
touch. That color is being isolated and it is pulling down my skin tones. While I'm in hue saturation, I also go to Luma versus Sat and I place a point here and here and I pull them down. And what that's ensuring is that anything that's in black or white is pure black and pure white. Doesn't mean that I can't add color in the color wheels to my shadows or midtones or highlights. It's just making sure that black is black and white is white. For this one, I actually don't want to add any shifts in color to the, I like the way that this is looking right now. Now you could stop there. I like to give it a very cinematic film look. That's so cringy and I know that does get, it's a buzzword. People avoid that word, but I like my, my video to look filmic-ish. So I do have a preset here, cinema flat black grade. And what it does, I'm gonna apply it, uncheck it and check it. It kind of just softens the image. If I go into it, it's basically just a color wheel. And all I did was lift the blacks and drop the midtones. I like that a lot. Really quick, y'all. I um, am editing this and I forgot to mention how exactly to make a preset in Final Cut Pro. This will speed up your workflow tenfold. Okay, so what you're gonna do, let's say that I have all of my LUTs and all of these corrections made and my footage is done and I'm happy with the way it looks. On the bottom right side over here, you're gonna see where it says Save Effects Preset. So I'm going to click that and we can name it Green Park Bench lol and save it to a category there's a bunch of different categories you can save it to i made one and called it youtube presets and as you can see it's going to save any of the attributes that are checked here uh, we're going to hit save i do already have one named that i'm just going to replace it i'm going to delete this adjustment layer i've undid all that work now let's say i went out and shot a bunch of footage and i know that this lut would be perfect for that footage i'm going to throw it in my timeline i'm going to grab my adjustment layer and what i can do is come over here double click that's it it's done. I don't have to make any adjustments already. Now, now, granted, you may have to make some exposure adjustments or some white balance adjustments in your color wheels, but that's it. And if I have other footage that I've already, that I shot that same day, I could take that adjustment layer and stretch it out across all that footage and it would apply that look to everything. So I could have an entire project graded hypothetically in less than five seconds. If I zoom in here, skin tones are looking a little magenta-ish. And so I'm just gonna lean it towards the green using the tint scale just a little bit. Now, I also add film grain. I don't remember where I got it. I got it a long time ago, but I did link a website that has a ton of film grain for free. For this one, I'm gonna use uh, medium. I like dirty film grain, personal preference. I, I place it underneath the adjustment layer, go to overlay, blend mode, and I will drop that down to about 20. And the last final touch is I'm gonna go to Stylize and I'm gonna go down to Letterbox. Double click that and I change the aspect ratio to 2.35. And then you can use the offset slider here to adjust your framing. I kind of like where that is right there. And that's really it for that clip. There's your before. And there's your after, major difference. Moving on, this is the next clip I wanted this to look like I was watching TV in the dark, in the living room, everybody's done it. And so I wanna recreate that feeling. And so first things first, I got my adjustment layer, custom LUT. Let's go in here, let's go to our conversion LUT. Boom, first step down. Next step, let's add our color wheel. Let's move it up and let's adjust the exposure. Now this one's a little bit different because this clip, I have dark parts of the scene and bright parts of the scene. Now I wanna adjust the highlights so that when the TV blasts me, that it is not blowing out my highlights. I could adjust highlights for this part of the scene, but then I would lift them up and by the time the TV turns on, it'll be completely blown out. So I'm going to pull this down quite a bit. Maybe like right there. My shadows are clipping. I wanna lift those up. And my midtones, I'm gonna leave like right there. I, I wanna uh, recreate the effect of like the cool TV. And so I am gonna bring the temperature down. Maybe like right there. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. We're gonna go ahead and apply a LUT first. Sometimes I need to apply the LUT and then know what changes I need to make. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna put another one. Now we're gonna do our creative LUT. For this one, I'm probably gonna use 1917. I like it, it's bold, it's dark, and the tones are, they're nice. Right off the bat, looks terrible. I know, we're gonna go back to our color wheels. Let's adjust the exposure again. Now my skin doesn't look right. And so I am actually gonna go into tint, pull it toward the green. It's looking really magenta right now. I'm gonna pull it towards the green. Right there is pretty good. Now I'm gonna take my shadows 
and I'm gonna push them towards green as well. Nothing crazy. Highlights, I want that blue glow on the TV, so I'm gonna push it. I don't wanna go too exaggerated. That's, that's a lot, but a little bit goes a long way. And so if I play back, there's dark, there's light. That still might even be a little too bright for my taste. Let's drop brightness down. I want that soft glow from the TV. That's good. I like that. From there, if I wanted to adjust my skin tones further, I could. I could go to hue saturation and we'll just pull it down just a touch. Just a little bit. Not a whole lot. Because I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Luma versus Sat. Drop down those two points again. Now that that's done, I'm going to take my hue saturation. Let's make sure that that's above. We're going to go into my color preset. I'm going to add that flat black. I can see it's flattened out the image quite a bit. Let's play back from dark to light. That's not bad. Let's grab my film grain. I'm just going to hold option and drag this over to copy it. There we go. And then the last step is to add our letterbox. And I think that's it for that clip. There's your before, there's your after. And then the last clip here for her, we'll uh, start with our adjustment layer. You already know, you know how this works. Custom LUT, convert it. We're gonna roll with this as our base. Next step, custom LUT, and I'm gonna get crazy with this one. I'm just gonna choose something I don't usually. Uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, there we go. Awful, straight awful. Would never do it. <laughs> I could scale it back. Let's see what it looks like if I scale it back. Um, I could scale it back to like 0.45 and be done with it. But what I'm going to do actually is we're going to put it at 0.75. And we'll go back into our color wheels. Let's adjust our exposure. It looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to adjust her skin tones, right? It's way too orange. But what I don't want to do is affect these orange shelves and things like that. So what I'm actually going to do is go into color wheels. We're going to bring this above the LUT, as always. And I'm going to add a color mask. And what I'm going to do is select, click and drag to select her skin. And then over here under the mask, I'm going to click view masks and then you can use these sliders to affect. I just want to make sure that the skin is chosen so you can really hone in. Now I'm going to click this again because this is the stuff of nightmares. And now that I have that color mask, I can go into the midtones and push it towards the cooler end. Just cool it down so it's not so orangey. We were in the orange, I wanna go the opposite direction. I'm going towards the blues. Now, if I turn that off and on, you can see what a difference. I'm just adjusting the skin tones, but this shelf is staying the same. I'm gonna put some uh, green into the shadows just a little bit. All right, let's wrap this one up. Let's go to my color preset. We'll flatten this clip out. Let's raise the midtones and then drop the shadows a little bit. It was a little too flat. There we go, I like that. Off, on. Softens the whole image, right? Let's grab our film grain. I'm just gonna drag it over. And then, last step, letterbox. And there we go. Before, and you're after. And that's uh, pretty much my process. So there you have it guys, that's my process for color grading in Final Cut Pro. I know that it's not the most professional or most glamorous way of getting it done, but it's the way that I get it done and it works for me. If you choose to follow this method, a quick recap, make sure that when you are filming, you were shooting in a log profile or as flat a profile as possible. Make sure that you were getting your exposure and white balance correct in camera. It's gonna help you a whole lot when it comes to post and gonna minimize the amount of time you have to spend correcting before you start grading. Then once you get it into your program, step one, conversion LUT. Step two, tweak that exposure and white balance or flip flop it depending on your preference. Step three, creative LUT. And then from there, if everything works out correct, depending on the LUT and depending on the footage, that might be it. Otherwise, you might have to tweak that white balance. You might have to tweak that exposure. And then from there, anything beyond that is totally up to you, whether it be film grain or letterbox or any other little embellishments that you want to add to your project. As always, if you found something of value or you learned something or you laughed or you were simply entertained, give this video a thumbs up. I'll greatly appreciate it. Or don't. You, you know, that's also an option. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel. I assure you more videos are coming. You won't be disappointed. Lastly, a quick shout out to my subscribers and the people who have been supporting me thus far. Uh, the response to the X-T4 A7 IV video I posted uh, has been overwhelmingly positive and people love it. And I'm very humbled. 
So, so thank you. Anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Until the next one, be kind to each other. Get out there and go, uh, go make something. Peace, y'all. If you want to see more videos like this one, if you want to see more videos like this one, click the, if you want to see more videos like, ugh.